Today is uh, February 24th, 2015. The City Council is now in session. If you do speak for the record, state your full name and we'll proceed. We do have a quorum here. Uh, we have a couple out tonight. And Mr. Garrett's out for one of his good friends passed away, so he's down in Peru to schedule things. And then Marty said he wasn't going to be here, he was going to be gone. So. We do have a quorum and we'll go on. The Common Council regular meeting was January 27th, 27 on 2015. Does anybody have any corrections on the minutes or additions? If not, I will entertain a motion to accept them as printed. printed. So moved. Second. All in favor? 5-0. Okay. The Board of Public Works and uh, Safety met January 22nd and also on February 5th of 2015. This is mainly for information only. And if anybody has any questions or concern, I'll be glad to answer them. If not, we will move on to uh, the public hearing. Does anybody have any questions on the Board of Public Works and Safety? Do we need to approve the minutes from yesterday's meeting? We don't have those till she prints the next meeting. We'll have those. Yeah, she emailed them. I emailed them and printed them. They should, there's a oh, copy later in front of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we'll back up. Does anybody have any questions on the Board of Public Works and Safety? No. Okay, we did meet yesterday, so usually we don't get them that quick. <laughs> You're welcome. So, uh, it's usually the following meeting. But we have them. Does anybody have any corrections to the meetings? On uh, February 23rd, we had a special meeting with uh, Terry Lee. Does anybody have any corrections or additions to that meeting? Do I have a motion to uh, go ahead and approve those as printed? So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, five zero. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and open the uh, public hearing, and the public hearing is open as I speak for an alley vacated for B and M Hoffman Enterprise for Mr. Grimm and your Richard Grimm is correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to defer this to Andy. Uh, do you want me to have Casey come up first on this to speak or open it up to the public or so should we know what's going on for Casey maybe? For informational purposes, maybe have Casey explain where it is. Okay. As uh, Andy just stated, Perkins, the attorney, we're going to have uh, Casey Coles, the uh, executive director, come up here and give us the uh, information we need to uh, know on this alley to uh, that is a petition to close. I am Casey Bowles, uh, Executive Director of the Planning Commission, and Mr. Grimm had come into my office and asked, was asking questions about, uh, he's rebuilt, started out by him rebuilding a barn um, that had been wind damaged, and he started discussing his home. His home actually sits right on the property line, to the extent where the gas meter probably uh, sits in the actual alleyway if not a portion of the home. Um, so we started looking at his plats and he started asking about vacating the, the alleyway. This particular area is a little bit confusing. I did email all of you the plats um, and I wanted to make sure that you were kind of clear on what's already been vacated. The alley itself is in Pfizer's edition, but Mr. Grimm's property is not. Mr. Grimm's property was actually cut out of farm ground a long time ago and it is not part of Pfizer's edition. Well, the, I guess I'll say common law rule, or the rule with vacating alleys is whomever owns lots inside that subdivision are the people who receive the land once an alley or street are vacated. So in Mr. Grimm's case, he has spoken to v &M Enterprises and they agreed um, to petition to vacate this alleyway so that at a later date, he can actually work with them to procure title for this area of this particular alley. Um, the reason why it's a very small portion of the alley is because throughout the years people have come in and vacated a lot of the different alleys in the streets. So that is the short and narrow of the confusing plot over by the cellar. <laughs> well, that Any makes questions? it clear now. I mean, with the picture here, it makes it a lot more presentable. So. To me, it does. Any questions? And since we've already got it, is everybody in favor of going ahead and uh, is that one six, the movie? 2015? Or? Yes. Okay. All in favor of <coughs> voting for the motions on the floor to vacate the alley? Say aye. 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 Okay. Now I'll entertain a motion to uh, pass ordinance. Yeah, I don't mean to have it. Yeah, I don't mean to have it. Yeah, it's just, uh, 6 
2015. Okay. A motion for the first reading of Ordinance 6 2015. By, By title, title only. Yeah. Okay, I have a motion on the floor for the reading of uh, 6 2015. Hoffman and Grimm Alley vacation. Or vacation. Vacated. Is it, do I have a second? Second. Burns. Okay, all in favor? 5 0. <laughs> Ordinance number 6-2015, ordinance vacating public ways. Part of a north-south alleyway within the original and subsequent plats of the city of Rochester in Rochester Township, Fulton County, Indiana. Okay, I'll entertain a uh, motion to have the second reading by title only. So moved. Second. All in favor? Ordinance number 6-2015, ordinance vacating public ways. Part of a north-south alleyway within the original and subsequent flats of the city of Rochester, Indiana. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to have the third reading of ordinance number 6-2015. Make a uh, motion that we suspend the rules and have the third reading of ordinance 6-2015 by following okay. Second that. All in favor? Five zero. Ordinance number 6-2015, ordinance vacating public ways, part of a north-south alleyway within the original and subsequent plats of the city of Rochester, Indiana. Any discussion? If not, I will entertain uh, a motion to go ahead and pass ordinance 6-2015, Hoffman and Graham, to vac about vacate the alley. So moved. Second. All in favor? Stick around if you want. You can leave if you want. Very fine. <laughs> okay, let's move on to uh, communications. Casey Coles, do you want to go ahead and give a report here for communications? I gave you all copies of our annual report. Um, every year, normally in January, I'll come see the legislative bodies with this, and this year I decided to wait until February. Mostly because I knew Mr. Grimm was going to be in front of you for the vacation and thought I would just come on at once. Basically, every year we do an annual report. This, this, this shows you how many permits we did in 2014 versus 13, so you can kind of see the difference. Um, I also have Heather break it down into townships to where you can see the different townships, which ones we issued the most permits in, what was actually being built. Um, <clears throat> and then I have her further break it down into the incorporated areas. So. 2014, we issued 537 permits versus the 2013, 604. Um, you can see in Rochester Township, we issued 279, 202 of which were in the city of Rochester. And then you can see how those are broke down. Um, the others, again, are just, those are things that we have listed over here in the box on the left-hand side, just decks, porches, sheds. There's just so many to list. We'd have a 10-page report. You can see where we had 45 total splits. That's not necessarily a city. It's pretty much in the county. Um, those would be land splits. I have five acres. I split off an acre for little Susie to build a house. Um, we had one plan petition, plan commission petition, and 45 BZA petitions. There were 42 development standard variances, 14 of which were in the city of Rochester, six special exceptions, three of which were in the city. We took in a total of $27,401.96 in 14. And I was going to say normally collected fines. Oh, city building permits were $7,594.65. So that kind of shows you the breakdown of all of that versus 2013. And again, the difference between our fees really is your permits and your fee structure. Uh, just because you guys go by the square foot and um, by the number of inspections, that's how much a permit costs. So when we have larger projects, um, the Schaefer Building, you know, when Walmart came in, Kroger, those are larger permits, larger costs. So that's a, that's mostly the difference between when you see a bigger number in 13 versus 14. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's move on to uh, Lori Polly. Welcome to the 
I'm Lori Pollock from Fulton County Council on Aging. Uh, we'll be doing this hopefully every year for a little annual review for 2014. Um, I gave everyone a packet. Um, the first page is uh, called the Operating Data Report for 2014. If you'll uh, locate that. So this is something that we do uh, for the whole whole year, um, something that we use for our annual reports, but it's some good information, kind of a good comparison. Um, at the very bottom, it shows our year-to-date totals and our previous year, so we can kind of preview, uh, do a quick snapshot of, um, or a snapshot of the previous year compared to the current year. We had a slight decrease, about 2%, which isn't huge. Um, so 2014, we did 44,147 trips, just in, uh, just for Fulton County residents. Um, at the side there, it's kind of a, a good um, breakout for um, showing each quarter um, what percentage we're taking to work, what percentage are, are the senior population, and then um, the rest is the public. So we average about 20, 21 percent um, that we take for our ridership to work, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, so I think this is a good snapshot of just overall what we do. Um, our rides currently are a dollar for the city per, per trip. So if you go to home to Walmart, it's a dollar. Walmart to home, it's another dollar. If you're 60 and older, it's um, donations are um, appreciated, but it's not mandatory. So we try to keep it pretty reasonable so that um, it's, the public can afford it. Um, it's also $3 within the county. So if you want to go outside the city limits, it's a $3 trip. Uh, we also have uh, tickets that you can buy, 12 rides for $10, so essentially you're getting, you're getting two free rides there. But um, another interesting thing I thought, um, just looking at how many rides that we do, we have about uh, approximately about $500,000 operating budget that we work off of. It fluctuates a little bit. Um, but just some of our funding sources um, I think is interesting. We have 35% um, of our operating costs comes from a federal grant um, through NDOT, and about 23% uh, of that comes from the state portion. And then the rest of it, um, the rest of the 42% is left up to, um, we get a city allocation, a county allocation, um, we get United Way allocations. We do bill Medicaid for medical transportation, so we do do some medical um, runs outside of the county. Um, we also have an Area 53B grant, and then the rest is our program service, which is our um, bus fares that we charge. So, just kind of an interesting um, overview of that. The next one is um, transportation units. Um, it shows from 2004 to 2014 kind of the span and how our rides have gone. So 2004, we did 22,000 rides, and all the way to 2014, we're up to 44,000. So, you know, just. Um, every year improving, adding vehicles, and, right and so I just thought that was interesting. Like the next part is our transportation costs for 2014. This is something that we do every year. It shows our operating costs um, in relation to our total trip. So right now, per trip charge, or per trip cost to us is $9.97. Um, so, you know, funding is very crucial to keep the, keep the fares the way they are, and that's kind of our um, goal there. We want to make it as affordable for the whole population that we can. Um, but we have improved on that. 2012, it was $10.77 per trip. In 2013, it was $10.62. So um, each year, we've improved in efficiency and um, things like that. Um, something that, some exciting things that's happened in 2014, uh, we were able to upgrade our radio system. So we're all digital now. So we have the most up-to-date um, technology that we can have right now. Um, it also came with a GPS tracker, so we're able to track our uh, vehicles, uh, where they're at, um, how fast they're going, uh, things like that. So I think for safety and efficiency, that's um, a big improvement. We also had um, Fulton County RMC was able to um, donate a pole and labor. Um, it's it's a, a lot higher than our um, old antenna, and they were able to set that for us. So um, the, the span, uh, for our radio um, span has improved a lot. I think we're, we can get up to 35 to 40 miles out. So it's nice um, for our drivers that are out, you know, in the middle of the county and um, kind of a ways away from the city limits. So that's really nice to have too. Um, another thing that I just shared in here is um, 
it's a couple of press releases. Um, we have uh, meetings with all of the public transportation um, agencies in, in Indiana, and we all um, meet about legislation and what's going on. Um, I was talking about the state portion that we get. It's called uh, PMTF, which is the Public Mass Transportation Fund. Um, that's been at a consistent um, amount for the last few years, and there's a bill on the um, House floor um, to increase that from $42.5 million to $60 million. So um, we're working with um, letting our legislators know what we're doing for the county and um, for our riders and kind of getting our word out. So just kind of good information to, to, for you guys to see. A couple other things that I also um, attach, um, something you may not have seen before. Uh, the first one is our um, writer's guide that we give to every one of our writers. It kind of has some of our rules and regulations that we can follow. Um, being courteous, being on time, calling at least an hour in advance. You know, we are public transportation. We work off a demand and response. You know, um, so just because you call and you want to go somewhere in five minutes doesn't necessarily ha always happen. It just, it just depends on how busy we are at that time. So we try to accommodate best we can. I think the, the biggest thing is if you call 24 hours in advance and you know you're going to have an appointment, that's the best bet um, to getting somewhere on time. But, um, you know, you can see here we do take people to the grocery store. We just try to limit them. Um, and we also, you know, service animals are permitted and different things like that. So it's just good information um, for all of our riders <coughs> to know what rules to follow and how to go about that process. So the next one is for our um, activities um, portion, which is a different um, than Transpo. But we do have a lot of activities that we offer. Um, we average weekly about 70, 80, um, 70 to 80 of our senior citizens that come. Um, not always doing the same thing, but a lot of them come and eat, eat the daily meals that are provided through Area 5 and a lot of different activities, um, bingo, movies, um, exercise group is now grown to like 25 to 30. So um, there's a lot of different s stimulating activities. Not everybody, I guess, you know, likes to do a craft, but, you know, we, we try to provide that for anybody that wants to. But I think that was interesting. Um, just to kind of sit down and think, gosh, how many seniors do come and um, visit our facility every week? And so I think that was good to share with everybody. Um, I also wanted to say I appreciate, um, you know, any issues that we've ever had, you know, calling one of the city workers or, or Mayor Smiley. I um, just appreciate your responsiveness and um, just trying to keep the building as safe and um, up to date as possible. And um, just provide a safe environment for all of our patrons that visit there. You know, we have a lot of people that come in and out, just not senior citizens. We have um, United Ministries Outreach Office in there and also the food pantry. So um, there's a lot of traffic every day. <laughs> so we appreciate any support there. Anybody have any questions for me? I got a question. Okay. Uh, how's the uh, carpet? Do you have a date when they're uh, I know they've ordered it. Okay. Yeah, we haven't the been result. in touch. Yeah, it's been ordered, so <laughs> we're really excited about that. Um, so I haven't heard back from them yet. So hopefully soon, and they're willing to work around our schedule. Um, so that's that's nice. So we're really excited about that. Good. Yeah. And then the siding's supposed to get done as soon as the weather breaks. Yeah, which is fine. I don't think there's going to be any further damage to it no, just no. with the winter. So we that's, yeah, yeah. I, wouldn't want to do it in this weather anyway. <laughs> so. Well, I appreciate you coming yeah. and giving us a report. Thank you. Yeah. Any time you have any questions, uh, feel free to call or stop in. We encourage anybody to take Transpo once, just to kind of see how it works. So. Well, the garage is really working out great. It's so. It's been wonderful, and it's it's, it's really saved on the wear and tear, it. and the fuel. You know, you don't have to let them sit and run for 20 minutes before you <laughs> are able to get going. So that's really helped a lot. It's really nice. Did you have to get your new vehicles in yet? Uh, there's two vehicles coming. I know they've been ordered. Uh, it usually takes 18 months. It's a oh. long process. So every year, uh, we sat out a year in ordering a vehicle, and it's just amazing how much the miles rack up pretty quickly um, doing that many trips. So every year we're trying to do a replacement vehicle for that. So uh, we're getting ready to finish up a grant that's due next week for another low-floor minivan for the following year. Kind of keep that consistent. 
How many vehicles do we have? 13 we have, we have 12. 12? Yep. yep. We sold a couple of the old ones, didn't we? We yeah. did. Yeah, The one of the vehicles, I think our highest mileage vehicle has about 222,000 miles on it, so that'll be a replacement. So, um, so far, you know, 2014 was a decent year. 2013 was a high repair year, a lot of transmissions. So, 2014 we did pretty well. So, we're hoping to keep that going. Great. So. Any other Great. questions? Thank you for Thank having you, me. Lord. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Okay. Chief Butler, do you have a report for the uh, Yeah, council? I handed a report out for everyone for the month of January. Um, structure fires, two in the city, one in Newcastle. Auto fire alarms, one in the city, two in Rochester Township. One vehicle fire in the city. Calls for smoke, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Did one fire investigation in the city. Accidents, one in the city, four in Rochester Township. Medical assist, 18 in the city, 18 in Rochester, or eight in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. We drove the ambulance eight times back to the hospital. We were called for two lift assist. We did one ice rescue in the city. We had three CO checks in the city. Canceled runs, one in the city. One in Ro Rochester Township, one in Henry Township. Had a total of 51 uh, calls and one drill. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for Chief Butler? If not, we'll move on to Chief Shots. All right, for the month of January, we had 28 total accidents, uh, with three of those being personal injury. There were 119 total warnings issued, 80 total offenses, with 24 of those being traffic and 47 being criminal, and nine being juvenile. Our officers drew 53 case reports. We had 623 calls for service, 34 lockouts, uh, nine total towed vehicles and 23 people incarcerated. And then you'll see the list of various crimes that people were lodged for in the month of January. As always, there's never, never a dull moment with that, right? Um, other news, I guess, uh, we do have our Facebook page, the, the police department, we have a Facebook page now up and running, so hopefully we can get some good press out of that. Um, we did get a vest grant for our dog, for a police dog. Um, and <clears throat> I, I believe the paper is going to run that, so is a shopper's guide. But part of the grant, uh, a stipulation is before they give you the, the vest, you have to do a press release. And then after they give you the vest, you have to do a press release. Okay. So we just threw it on our Facebook page and had pretty good response from it. Um, and like I said, the dog that we're going to be getting, it, it, we're not going to get that until September. So um, I think that's about it. It's, it's been pretty quiet. Um, I'm sure most of you heard about the pursuit and all, all that stuff last week that went all over town. And yeah, it did, didn't it? Yeah. Why didn't you stop him? Just jump out and stop him. I was thinking about it. I know. <laughs> Other than that, that's about all I have, unless you have any questions. <laughs> Brian Goodman, do you have anything on uh, FedCo? Uh, yeah, FedCo met February 5th, um, reporting a checking account balance of 148,606,98. Operating reserve balance of 107,393,47. Um, Terry presented the 2015 budget uh, of note. The CDIT was up this year, so I was able to get a little more for small business and entrepreneurship development. Um, the lawsuit against Rochester Iron and Metal is over. Uh, it was a favorable outcome for them, but they're done with that. Uh, Rapid View and r, &R Visual are um, doing well, um, and the, the winery, Chernobyl Tears, they've also become a distributor for South Bend Chocolates and also a distributor for Watchfire Signs, who and they do primarily LED signs. I spoke about Ag Drainage before. They were the company out of Illinois that was interested in the superior sample. Um, that 
deal fell through, but they're still interested in this in the market in the region here. Uh, but right now it's on the back burner, so hopefully something will come of that later on. And you guys know about we're um, there is interest in the Hart Shafter and Marks building, which we'll talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, that's moving forward. Um, and the last report I had on American Axle is there's really there's not anyone there, but um, there are a lot of contractors going in, moving in equipment. Yeah, I don't know when uh, when they'll be starting up, but hopefully soon. And that's it. That's all I have. Thank you, Brian. Any questions? Who is the ag drainage dealer here? The business? Ag drainage. Oh, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Because right. we just partnered with a company called ADS with ag drainage also. So I just kind of wondered. Okay. Uh, Terry Lee, do you have anything while you're here for Rochester Redevelopment Commission? Uh, we've got things uh, moving along with the Safe Routes to School grant, the NDOT grant. Uh, we've selected the contractors there. They've been out for some of the site surveys at the schools to monitor where the kids are coming into the schools from in terms of on foot. Um, we've uh, applied for the planning grant from OCRA at <coughs> uh, the end of uh, January. Uh, they did uh, contact us and request some additional information, which we got to them right away. And uh, we think we'll find out about that uh, within the next uh, three weeks or so. Uh, we've done the uh, contractor selection on that also, so as soon as we're okay by Oak, we'll be getting some of that planning piece uh, started. We're working closely with the Main Street organization from the chamber um, and uh, preparing some polls for downtown property owners and stuff like that to see what kind of inventory and interest we have from the uh, current property owners in terms of uh, uh, near uh, or, or future investment in their properties. Um, we will probably uh, want to talk to the council about uh, an application uh, by May 1st of, uh, for a DNR RTP recreational trails program grant uh, for the extension of the nickel plate from 18th up to 9th Street. Uh, we're working on uh, a couple different things there including a, uh, a lease uh, agreement that will be entered into between the city and Fulton County LLC on that piece of ground to the west side of the rail line between 18th and 9th Street. I uh, hope to have that probably for Andy's review within the next week or so um, and hope we, we would want that hopefully wrapped up by the end of April because we'd need it probably for the submission of the DNR grant. That'd be a $200,000 grant that would go into uh, the trail or uh, also the uh, uh, trailhead center at 9th Street that we're planning. Um, there won't be any cash. Usually there's a 20% cash match for that. We've already raised that. Um, outside of any uh, of redevelopment funds or city funds, so we've already uh, we've got the match lined up for that. So there shouldn't be any out-of-pocket cash on that, except um, <clears throat> you know grant writing. If I don't write it myself, there may be a small fee for grant uh, writing, which typically is reimbursed under the grant anyway. Um, Shot and I've worked on uh, Shot to help me with the administration of the last DNR grant, so we're kind of we got our hands around that I think pretty well. Uh, we may move forward with a second okra grant request this year uh, for construction in the downtown um, district that we're kind of uh, working on for redevelopment and that is um, is probably it for now so our main projects are the bicentennial nation uh, bicentennial nature trust grants which allow us to uh, reach out and get sort of um, uh, bargain sales on properties that we have our eyes on for just open public space for the future. Uh, the theater project downtown we're working on. Uh, the, um, of course, the downtown renovation projects we're working on, and then also the depot and trail. So that's kind of what's in the redevelopment commission uh, pipe for right now. I think that's it. Unless there's questions. Thank you, Terry. Yeah. Do you want to uh, talk about our resolution while you're up here? Sure, as the Fed Code Director, um, yeah, as the Fed Code Director, we'd like to ask for a declaratory resolution 03 2015 designating a portion of the city as an economic revitalization area so that under Indiana uh, Code we can request property tax abatements. Um, as we continue to work, you know, uh, with the potential buyer on uh, on that project for the Harp and Marks building on Wabash Avenue. Um, we kicked around a couple of different things today, but I think we have a, um, a final resolution in front of you. 
Uh, there's some um, question as to whether or not our legal description on the first page is exactly what we need. Andy, I think. Um, and then you probably have an exhibit A that just shows the, the, the property outlined. Uh, and then what we would want to do if this is uh, past the night is uh, move forward with setting a public hearing um, for, um, I, I would imagine, your next uh, council meeting, the end, of, uh, the end of March. I think that'll give me enough time to get the uh, SB1 documentation in from the company so we know what jobs and pay rates and, and investment and stuff like that we're looking at. Um, so that's what I would present for your review. <laughs> Terry, if this resolution passes, is that, do you think you would need to be sooner than that? For the, um, for the next meeting? Or? No. Okay. No. Okay, so <clears throat> the resolution, the declaratory resolution number 3-2015, and this is mainly for the uh, old Hart Chapter in Marks Building. Right. Um, so there's, we need this in order to go further, correct? Yeah, we need this in order to uh, move forward with uh, uh, the public hearing that would establish whether or not we're going to allow the property tax abatement to the, um, the new buyer, or to the buyer. Okay, I will entertain a motion to go ahead and read resolution number 3-2015. Does it need to be read by title or the entire, since we know what it is? That's up to the council. One time. Hey, Andy. For yeah. the resolution? Yeah. In entirety or by title? Uh, you, can, you can, if you have agreement, you can read it by title only. Well, it's, it's mainly a, a lot of legal jerbies, so it's the Hart Chapter Marks building in black and white. We know it's that building to go ahead. I make a motion for the reading of resolution number 3 2015 by title only. I do have one question before we move on. Right. Terry, to the, is that to the south here? To, where it cuts kind of the mid parking lot? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That is where the parking lot ends for that current hard chapter marks, and then the rest of that is owned by someone else. And that's the part that's being used. That's the part that's being used by the nickel plate currently. The part that's being used by the nickel plate is the, um, southernmost portion, the, the piece that's actually out of the yellow frame box there. Okay. Lodge their families. The okay. one-thirds. Yeah. Uh, Whitley Manufacturing owns the grass lot on the corner and the, about the first third of that parking space. Okay. And then we have one owner that owns the building and then the parking to the north and the parking to the south. Right. It's two parcels. Um, one parcel is the building and the parking to the north and then the second parcel is the by about two thirds of the asphalt parking on the south side of the building. Thank you. Sure. Then I will second the motion that's on the floor. Okay, all in favor to uh, read by title only? Five zero, okay. <coughs> Declaratory resolution number 3 2015, resolution designating a portion of the city of Rochester, Indiana as an economic revitalization area. Okay, I'll entertain them. Motion to uh, pass resolution number 3 2015. Make a motion for the adoption of declaratory resolution number 3 2015. Second. All in favor to pass resolution 3 2015. Say aye or raise your hand. Okay. 5 0 to pass. Okay. And what we'd like to do the, will the public hearing at your next council meeting? Oh, I was going to say, not this week. <laughs> <laughs> At the March council meeting, work out. Okay. Okay. Would you like? Would you like that? Get it on the agenda. Six o'clock, or you, you want to get those done first? Six. Six o'clock. Same okay. time as regular. I meeting. just have to publish the time and the date. Six o'clock. All that stuff. Okay. Six o'clock. First. Time. All right. You got it. Thanks. All right. Here, uh, Chase. Do you have anything on solid waste or animal adoption? Uh, yeah, animal. 
evacuated me from the animal shelter. They uh, dropped off their reports. They were in the packet. Oh, were they? Okay, good. Um, just a few things. <clears throat> Last in the month of December, the county landfill received 20,386 tons of waste and 24 working days for a daily average of 849 tons. Fulton County accounted for 3,796 tons. The rest of Indiana contributed 16,590 tons and zero tons from out of state. The host fee was 25,833.65. Um, no one but Keyways bid on the curbside collection contract offered in Kiwan and Colton. Uh, so the solid waste is still planning on continuing the uh, collection if the weather cooperates. Um, Akron opened up bids which last week and a company out of Clay Pool bid. Their bid was around four fifty, which exceeded the three dollars and ten cents for the board agreed to, so it was rejected. Um, I believe Doug had gotten a call again. Um, the town received a call from Advanced Waste Solutions suggesting that they might be able to get their bid down to the $3.10, but wasn't for sure. Um, and they would be able to offer that to all three towns. Um, so I think they're still waiting to see what happens there. Um, Doug has explained to the board that um, he has officially set a retirement date for himself. Um, his last working day is going to be Friday, September 11th, 2015. Um, he expects to be here until then unless something you know, drastic changes. Um, he'd like to make sure someone is capable of doing the director's job, so he's going to spend some time with Stacy um, to learn, for her to learn some of the job that he does. And then, Mark, do you want to explain a little bit about the uh, recycling, curbside recycling that the city wants to do? Um, we're looking into going ahead and picking it up with the street department. That's what we're doing. And we're negotiating with solid waste if they want to uh, kick in some of the funds to help offset some of our part-time help. So we're looking at uh, having a trailer built like they had before and just doing it with our city part-time workers to keep it going. And we're going to try it and see how it goes. And, you know, it's a pilot project and we're going to try to go ahead and do it in-house. And we were in negotiation negotiating with the solid waste and next meeting we'll know more about what kind of money if they're going to kick in any to help pay for our part-time help because we will have to pay some of our people to do it but we by buying a new trailer we can utilize that down the road to haul our equipment on anyway because we don't have that type of a trailer so we'd have a bill like 19 foot this way it's been recommended by uh, Mark Floor that works there with Warren Lease and the uh, solid waste doesn't have a truck to do it. So we talked about doing it in-house at the solid waste, but they've hired some part-time help also since they have more coming into the building now since it's not being picked up, people are bringing more recycling to the solid waste. So we're going to try to get this uh, off the ground here in the middle of March, maybe, or the 1st of April. It depends on when we can get this trailer built and when we get <clears throat> things rolling. And then what we would do is we'd still pick it up every two weeks, but if the city does it, we'd rather try to do it every week, but it'd still be a cup at your house. We'll do like Mantle Heights and the lake one week, and then we'll do precincts one, two, and three the next week. So you'd still be picking up as your homeowner, you put it out once every two weeks, but that way we wouldn't have to pay overtime because the way Doug Oak said that the previous contractor, they spent about 55 hours a week to do the Rochester area. But I don't know if that was including Rochester Township, but we would not be picking up Rochester Township. We would only be picking up city residents. So for an addition in Rochester Township, they would be on their own, but we'd only pick up city residents. So we're going to try it and see how it goes. And uh, by the time leaf season gets here next year, we'll have a handle of how it's working. And that would be um, 
might cause us some issues. We don't know, but by then we should have it down to a science, hopefully, that will be uh, minimizing our hours. So, and we're going to try it and see how it goes. And there's no guarantee, but uh, you know, we feel that uh, as myself being the mayor, I think it's my due diligence to try to keep the green in the city and pick up recycling because a lot of elderly can't take it to the solid waste and talking to a lady that lived over at Waterhaven, there was no room to put a dumpster there for, you know, recycling. So, you know, it's, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes and nothing ventured, nothing gained, but if, I think we can make it work, so. Do we have any projections on what the cost will be? Well, actually, it's, it's hard to weigh the cost. Well, the uh, labor, we had it broke down if, if we paid the labor, it would be so much per hour, but they only figured our labor at 950, but our labor costs more than that because we have Social Security, we have Medicare, we have ben not benefits and so much. And our part-time employees per hour are more than that. Right. So that's what we got to look at, and because uh, I said something about paying us the same amount they paid the contractor. Well, the contractor wasn't making a profit because he would be doing it again if he was making a profit, $2.07 per pickup. So we're going to work that out, but if we'll see how it goes, but I still think we need to try to incorporate it in with picking up our recycling. We, we drive by all the time picking up grass clippings and sticks, so it's within our budget. We're going to shoot for it and try it. If it doesn't work, then go a different direction, but I think we can make it work. So we've got the we've got the equipment other than a trailer, you know. So it might be a little bit more gas and that, so we'll see how it goes and we'll just have to see and I mean if we have to switch a little something in the we get to the end of the year and we don't have money, well, we might not be able to we might have to take one line item to pay the other, but down the future, you know, it might be where we ask for a charge, you know, but I don't know. But right now we're going to do it complimentary in the city. Try it. Sure. If it doesn't work, we'll know in a couple months. <laughs> so, real quick. Yeah. Yep. so it's worth a try. I'm tired of taking it over there myself because <laughs> it doesn't get taken over every two weeks. It gets stockpiled, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people aren't doing it. So, I mean, I think it's important that we do this for the, everything. <clears throat> but that's a short version of the explanation. So if anybody has any questions, you know, everybody's getting calls on it. It's a popular item, really. Yeah. You know, so. Now we got a call in yet. Pardon? Now we got a call in yet on I'll, I'll get it in the ring. You can forward it to me. <laughs> I got your phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Garrett gets a few. There you go. District guy. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll work out good. I think we'll be able to handle it. <coughs> Get more community helpers. Do you have anything else? Oh, no, that's it. Any questions for Chase? If not, let's move to uh, Tom Butler. Do you have anything up to uh, EMS, EMA? Um, the tree board actually, we, we did meet, um, had someone from the state come up and, and talk about some grant possibilities and reviewed our tree city and, and all that. It was uh, very complimentary what the city has done. Um, also mentioned two things where we already have a budget. If, if we were to take like our the budget that we use for, for planting trees, submit that to this grant, since it's a matching grant, we could double what we're receiving in trees. So we're going to be looking into that. It sounds like a good program. Um, EMS uh, reported their revenue for January was $46,054.32. Uh, their total runs, Akron 30, Kiwana 39, and Rochester 119, a uh, total of 188. Uh, EMA, um, LAPC Local Emergency Planning Committee met as well. On the 19th, um, one of the big things they talked about was the P25 upgrade. Uh, the city's in good shape with between the PD and the fire department. We uh, purchased the dual band radios, which I think they're still going to have to be re retouched. But as far as um, being capable to, to do all this reprogramming, uh, it's just a, a, a touch with a computer. Uh, kind of put it in the 800. They have different uh, trunks. So they're going to readjust the trunks for us. Um, 
but both our departments are, are in, in fine shape for that. Again, talking about doing a, um, a county exercise, they want to do a hand-on instead of a tabletop this year. Um, talk about NIMS compliance again, and then um, the fire departments are working on redoing some of the mutual aid mappings. Uh, there were some discrepancies on, on who was going to respond as the second department in what area. Uh, so the, the, we're going to work with uh, the dispatch on that and, and get better adjusted on that. Uh, that's about it. Uh, the ambulance did have, or EMS did have some issues with the ambulance they purchased, used. Um, uh, some airbag issues and, and, and compressor issues, but they did purchase use, but they got that worked out and up and running well. So all, all four vehicles that they own are on the road and, and running well. Um, so uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Tom. Any questions? That's nice. We'll come back to Park Board. Burns, Park oh. Board? Yeah, Park Board, man. February 9th, a uh, little lamb daycare came in and uh, they want a bike ride uh, in July 26th out to City Park uh, as a fundraiser uh, for a couple hours. And uh, uh, they want to uh, put it, uh, they had quite a discussion about traffic control. Uh, instead of closing the park, they wanted to close the park and they really can't do that with Manitou Mountain and all that kind of stuff available the other direction. So. Uh, but they're still going to go ahead with it, and uh, they're just going to have to uh, get some of the uh, people to help out with a little traffic control out there and uh, parking the cars and this type of thing. Fly fishing uh, is also on the agenda with the park board again this year, like it was last year, uh, about um, April 11th. Uh, and uh, that fellow comes from Plymouth. He's a former principal up at Plymouth School System teaches uh, fly fishing, and uh, he's coming down again. Uh, they got into this rubber mat business uh, uh, and the cost of rubber mats for the Manitou Park, or Manitou Mountain. And uh, as you've been out there underneath the swings, the kids drag their feet when they swing, and it digs a big hole, and uh, all that chip wood goes flying, and uh, there's it gets deeper and deeper and deeper, and uh, so they proposed putting a mat down, filling that up, putting a mat down, and then putting some chips on top of that. So when their feet go back and forth, they're on a heavy, real heavy mat, uh, and it will only dig those holes. And also coming out of the slides, Manitou Mountain, uh, there's a that drop is quite, and the kids kick all that out of there, and. It, gets deeper and deeper, and the drop gets higher, and the little kids have quite a fall. So they're going to do the same thing there. They're going to put mats underneath there, and then put, uh, fill the holes and put the mats on top of the hole, and then put chip uh, on top of that. Uh, rubber mats, uh, they have found the Manitou Mountain uh, six by four by six by two, uh, something like that, or three by three. Uh, these things, uh, around $560 a piece. Uh, and they need uh, six of those. And uh, for the swings, four for the slides, uh, somewhere around, uh, they're gonna put about $2,000 in some of these mats. All the mats, and they can pick them up over at Warsaw. And what they did is they went to a conference down in Indianapolis and found people that make these mats, and uh, they uh, get them over to Warsaw. And so it's not that far. Uh, they could actually, uh, we could go actually go and pick them up. Uh, they're very heavy. Uh, so when you think of a mat, you think of something soft, a piece of really heavy rubber mats. Just keep the kids from, you're going to wear out the shoes, but <laughs> got to keep the kids from digging the holes. Anyhow, they, they had quite a talk about that. Uh, they need a new park mower, uh, so they're going to look into that. Uh, the restroom uh, by the ball diamond has to be not taken out, uh, and uh, also there's another restroom down there. It's a cement block and it has electricity in it. So they've got to get the electricity cut off before they can demolish that uh, block building, that restroom. There's a, it's been boarded up for years, sits on the corner down there, and there's a, for no consequence. 
uh, most of the fellows who use the basketball court go over for ball diamond that area. And there's a restroom over there. So it's, it's uh, functional. So they're going to see what they can do, possibly put up another new restroom. And these are extremely costly to do, and uh, which they have found out. And they're discussing that, too. Uh, the pier at the beach. Uh, they've got bids on that. Uh, the piers have uh, uh, disintegrated quite a bit. And uh, the plastic piers uh, that they weather and they crack and uh, the geese they stain badly they turn purple by the year's end because of the geese and uh, they can do better with aluminum piers and uh, uh, rather than the vinyls and uh, they are looking at something like that and uh, the tune about six thousand dollars and uh, which they would uh, uh, go out three sections and then three sections across. Otherwise, three sections out, and then at the end, put two more sections on that at the end one, which would be a three section. And uh, that would uh, get them out uh, um, away from the rocks and so on. And maybe the kids would quit diving off the dam and playing over there. That's dangerous. So they're, they're talking about uh, several different things they, they got in the works. That's about it. Thank you, Burns. Any questions? <clears throat> Did I forget anybody? <clears throat> We're all got uh, in there, right? Okay, let's move on. Any unfinished business <clears throat> or new business from any council members? Amy, well, do you have anything in the legal department? Uh, the uh, litigation on the Abbott property continues. Uh, there, there are other attorneys involved, so this won't be a default judgment situation. I'll keep posted on that. Uh, Mark asked me to check and see if the state had um, uh, any uh, de facto regulations uh, uh, on a city for collection of, of recycling. And the short answer to that is none that I could find. I mean, in the, I mean, yes, there are regulations, but I mean, a, uh, a, a mandate to a municipality a, Thou shalt make sure there's a way to collect recycling. Um, no, not going to comply. So that's that's all I have here. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Any ADA concerns? Or do you have anything else you want to <clears throat> Burns? Yeah, I I've gotten uh, some calls. Uh, this uh, is the house that the uh, gentleman came in uh, to the council and talked about. Uh, on 8th and Monroe, corner 8th and Monroe, it's a big old greenhouse. It's uh, got uh, varmints in it again. And, uh, uh, 8th and Monroe or 7th and Monroe or 10th and Monroe? Uh, I think there's one he owns on 7th and Monroe. And I'm going the wrong direction Monroe. again. Okay, I'm going the wrong direction again. Uh, it's in that direction, so it would be 10th and Monroe. The one that we've had in here before. Right, and the gentleman came in and owns it. Uh, his wife uh, passed away. Uh, passed away, and she did have it. And she he said it. he was going to, he actually lived there at one time. He said, uh, and he was going to fix it up, but he didn't have the money, if you remember correctly, right. to do anything. Well, it really has become a problem again. And uh, there's a lot of varmints in the thing, uh, taking refuge this winter and uh, uh, it's in bad shape. Also, the burnout uh, farther down in Monroe. Uh, now it goes down to, uh, and I can't tell you the address on it because I can't 14 find. something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have done nothing with that. They boarded up the lower floor, but the upper floor is open. Uh, the windows are still out of it, and the back part of it is, is still open. I just talked to Casey about it earlier, actually, and she said that she was sending a letter I think this week to him because she hasn't heard anything from him now. So about that one, and then about the one on the Kessler House also. I believe, so. Yeah. Those are those are the two. That Did we give him so much time last time he was in here? Well, yes. You gave him twelve months. Yes. Uh, so. And I did. I she, Mrs. Brown had contacted me, and I asked Andy about that. Um, 
if the, the only way that you can bring it back in front of the council is if Casey cites him again for that property. So I did mention it to Casey to take a look at that property again to, to see what we could do or couldn't do. But I did let her know that there was a 12 month um, the reprieve that you that the council had gave Mr. Kessler on that property. I'm sorry, it'll be June, I believe. This June? Or, Ju or July, I'm sorry. July, July, so it'll be right around the corner then. Mm -hmm. So. We still don't know who owns the burnout. It, yeah. Casey, yeah, that's she, the one that changed to prop, uh, yeah. ownership, somewhere right in the middle of the process. Okay. Of the burnout? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, Casey knows who it is, though. I think she's I got the so. same right now. Okay. I, I think the owner was different than the, than the tenant. I think it was a, a mother-son thing, and, right. had, and then somehow he got a hold of the insurance and he left, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, leaving her with the uh, abandoned property and a burnout state. That's, that's the one. That's, I mean, that's the way I recall it. Yep. Um, <laughs> so we need to follow up with Casey and see if we can pursue that for an unsafe building. I mean, that's we've talked about that before. Do you recall on that I burnout don't. building where we were at? I don't, I don't recall. That's Just the one follow I up on it. Yeah, so that's the one I think that was a Swafford, a Swafford property. It was, it was by the elementary school, isn't it? So by Columbia, Columbia right. School. Yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. right through by it, yeah. And, and that's the farm for Swafford. Yeah. But and there's, the there's the nice, the nicely kept property on the other side of it. There's something else. On one side of it there. To the south. Yeah, to the south of it. Uh, those okay. people uh, are uh, really impressed there. Right. Uh, they they can keep their property up. Well, let's call our <coughs> Casey then, and we can maybe have something for the next meeting and see where we're at. Okay. Anything else? Mark, I do have something that I did not get on the agenda, but I gave to each of the council members and on you the, uh, a proposed early debt payoff. This is something I don't want you guys to take action tonight unless you feel so moved to do it. Uh, you know, we can always discuss it at the next council meeting with the other members present. I got to looking at our general obligation bond. It'll be paid off in December of 2017. Um, I contacted the bank.